drink. Cigarette? I quit. All right, then. Let's get started. Okay. It's October 20th, 1997, at approximately 0127 hours. This is a tape-recorded interview being conducted at Hollywood Police. My name is Harry Ross, Lieutenants Michael Nielsen. and here's the way my life has gone. Before we go any further, First, I was a cop, then a private detective, and then a drunk. Also in there somewhere, a husband and a father. You'd think with all that that the world would lose its power to seduce, but you'd be wrong. see me in the last rebel yeah and you saw me in the end of desire yeah <laughs> I think you've seen everything there is of me to see I also remember a movie your husband made he shot 12 guys with a six-shot revolver I can argue with that kind of marksmanship <laughs> well it's safe to turn around now you got a light yeah I'm also short a cigarette. Thanks. What's your ration for the day? Seven. Eight yesterday, six tomorrow. How many so far? Twelve. Including this one? Oh, no, this one doesn't count. If you don't light it yourself, it's free. Harry? My wife's never going to sleep with you anyway. You might as well come up here and play cards. If my lame brain husband asks you if I'm still angry with him, the answer's yes. Well, what's he done now? Oh, the usual. Bouncing checks, making withdrawals without telling me, not listening to his doctor's recommendations. In short, being Jack. In short, being Jack. You know that I've decided to go ahead and do the chemotherapy worked before, so never know. At least I thought you'd be pleased. We found Billy Sullivan last night. Or what's left of him. Well, I guess I've been expecting that for 20 years. Look, you think what you like. Uh, It wasn't murder. It wasn't like you murder somebody. Catherine and I had fallen in love. As you know, Catherine's easy to fall in love with. Eventually, Billy found out about it and came after me. I was staying out the ranch. Tell him to turn around. There he is, so drunk he can hardly stand up, swearing he's going to kill me. The swimming pool was empty. You should have heard the sound his head made when he hit the bottom. You should have seen the way he just lay there and didn't move. One second is all it took and the man's life was snuffed out. You are good. You are very good. Well, I would have believed you except I saw the corpse. What are you talking about? There's a bullet hole in the back of his head. That's impossible. Nope. Did you bother to go down and look and see whether he was alive? Of course not. Because there was blood and there was a body. You didn't want to be part of it. You just wanted someone to come along and make it all go away. So he called Raymond Hope. What did he say? Told me to get the hell out of there. And he'd come and clean up the mess. But Raymond lived in Los Feliz back then. It would have taken him, what, an hour to get there? Who else you call? If you harm her in any way at all, 
I swear to Christ, I'll come back from the grave and I won't be in a fucking wheelchair either. <laughs>